Namaste. How's it going? Just a quick reply, when is the best time to practice meditation and energy channeling techniques such as pranayama, mudra, visualization, chanting, asana, and healing? All right. So you have to consider first your body clock and second your time availability or situation. Yeah, and then you adapt because there are like four periods during the day and night where the energetic body is open. The shushumna nadi is open, the state of homeostasis. Yeah, the brain is open, the energy is flowing, so we can maximize our gain. So the first window is between half a spoon in the morning and six in the morning. So if you're an early riser, I would suggest practice pranayama. Early hours of the morning is the prana side. Yeah, pranayama, and I tell you, you don't have to do much preparation. It's so meaningful. The right and the left channels, yeah, either pingala open, the shushum, the nadi open, the breath yeah, freely flows through our system. All right. After half past six, yeah, it's not ideal anymore because the Sushumna Nadi closes and what predominates our system is the right channel. All right, so the next window is between 1 p.m. and 3 in the afternoon. And then during those times, yeah, the best yeah, technique to practice is either yeah, asana, yeah, to balance yeah, the, uh, any, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, asana, or you might just do your relaxation. Yeah, so this now when the body would like to take the break from the morning activity, either you counter that by increasing your energy to sustain you for the afternoon activity or relax, take a nap, yeah, take your recovery. All right, so during 1 and 3 p.m., I have attained a number of samadhis too. Yeah, so when the body would just like to rest for a moment, break of uh, free from the morning activity and then the brain drifts yes so uh early or uh, afternoon early afternoon yeah good for asana and relaxation all right next window is between 6 p.m and 8 p.m the sun setting period yes uh, but i really practice nowadays during those times because i teach but before, when I was doing my experimentation and practice, yes, I could attest that between 6 and 8 p.m., the energetic body is open. And what are the techniques uh, suited in those times? Asana, yeah, chanting. Chanting uh, in the early hours of the evening is so meaningful yeah, because the chanting, we equalize our energy. Because during the day, yeah, one of the most challenging part is the energy gets stuck around here because of stress. Yeah? And then we break free by yeah, allowing a voice and the vibration to equalize the system. And the last window, and this is so special, is after 12 midnight, between 12.30, half past 12, and 2.30 in the morning. This is when I attain most of my deep, rich, and meaningful samadhi. Yeah, where the brain is drifting, or not drifting, but transitioning from sleep to dreaming, and not dreaming at all. The shushumna nadi is open, the, shush, the kundalini will just pierce through the chakra, and samadhi could happen spontaneously without you doing anything anymore. And what are the techniques? Really. So, um, at night, yes, so what I do is I just do practice gentle humming, yeah, the om. Yeah, and then sometimes I would do some eye techniques there, and I would just allow my brain to drift. And yeah, my samadhis in the early hours of the morning is really spontaneous, but so deep and meaningful. So, what can you make out of this? Yeah, by having the knowledge that there are like specific times where our energetic body is open so we can practice and maximize our gains. And then by knowing that there are specific times, you can adapt. You let yoga come to you to adapt and suit your situation. Mm. All right. And then not you forcing yourself to practice because a certain technique says so. Yeah, in these modern times, the most challenging is really time. Yes. Who has the time? All right. But you know what? Um, it takes uh, maybe just a couple of years of consistent practice. Yeah, and after that, once your brain remembers, because it's a skill, really, I tell you, it's a skill. It's like learning how to, to drive or how to operate the machine. Once you become so efficient doing that, your brain remembers it, and you can easily access your shushumna anytime 
you have the need for it. What, what's important here is consistency. Finding that time suited for you. Not only the time, even the space. Yeah, you have to do it right at that specific uh, spot. Yeah, because the brain associates itself to that spot and in the techniques you practice at that particular location in your house. Yeah, yes, it's so true. When I practice my pranayama, yeah, at the place where I practice my asana, it's not as, I'd say, energetically enriching. But when I practice it by my bedside, that's my pranayama practice space, then it becomes so, I say, meaningful. Yeah, it becomes so open because the brain, yeah, disassociates itself from the activity of the asana that you know that you're at bedside, that's my place of pranayama, then it's 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 relaxing yeah and when the brain is relaxed the breath flows so really um uh yoga yeah is adaptable yes um it it doesn't have to be like a chore it has to be enjoyable yeah let it come to your life and then when it happens and then you gain and feel the benefits yeah then it becomes like a part of you yeah, it's an enjoyable experience it's not a forceful way of like accomplishing things and this when you become like yoga yeah you become like yoga and yoga becomes you yeah, and you can take it <laughs> anywhere, anytime you have the need for it. So thank you, and I'll catch you in the next one. Good luck, and have a meaningful day. Namaste.